Hello everybody. Uh, in this video, well, we need to talk about Battlefield 2042. So first of all, I already put more than 100 hours into the game. Yeah, I play this game a lot. And I do acknowledge that the game has plenty of issues. Plenty. Now, I won't go over them. You probably know many of them. You can even Steam, visit Steam reviews and you can see a list of all the missing features that people really want in a Battlefield game and actually missing. But Let's take it like that. If you ever play a Battlefield game, alright, before, and you just jump into the game, whether you enjoy it as it is right now, well, I can tell you that I skip Battlefield 5 uh, because once I kind of uh, get the feeling of it by just seeing gameplay and trailer, I decided this won't be for me. I'll wait. And there are plenty of other great games that I actually played, so it wasn't a big deal. But the time actually uh, that reached to Battlefield 2042 release, I was very, very into getting into Battlefield again. I really wanted to play Battlefield again, and there isn't anything like Battlefield out there. I wish there was an alternative, otherwise I probably would consider the options, but there isn't. There isn't something that brings you such an amazing sandbox first-person shooter experience, and this is exactly the reason I'm playing the game. Now, I played this uh, Battlefield since Battlefield uh, 2. Uh, my favorite is Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 1. So I can tell you what for me are the main issues with Battlefield. Now first of all, when it comes to balance, you immediately feel balance and this related also to, of course, the map size. I mostly play Breakout and um, uh, the, main, the official maps. The reason for this is because Conquest on a large map is absolutely a disaster. Most of the time what you're going to do is just run, spend time moving from one place to the other, Sometimes die, you need to run again. This is absolutely catastrophe playing this game mode on a large map. The reason I choose to play Breakthrough is because Breakthrough actually enforces team play. You all move in a single line, there's a choke point, different areas with choke points, uh, save two, two or three areas that you need to capture and move on to the next one. Although the map is very large, you are actually restricted to only part of it. Right, you don't. The map are really large, but again, because you move part by part, you actually uh, uh, kind of uh, get a choke point in those areas, and this leads to really great battle, especially with 128 players. It really feels intensive and fun. So the reason you see me actually posting great videos, I really enjoy it, is because I'm actually focusing on really a certain game mode that I enjoy playing, and even then, not all of the maps I actually enjoy playing. The one with the uh, with the snow, I think it's a disaster, absolutely a disaster. And having some, for example, one of the maps where you need to actually climb a building, what's the point in having such a huge map so open when it's something there's a building with an elevator with everybody just go up and get executed by like 10 players just waiting for them to go up? Of course, there are other alternatives to go there. Now, we already seen this in the beta, that the maps are so huge, that that's the reason why the, those who are actually really having fun is actually vehicles. Because players are just running open in the wild, and it's very easy to shoot them down if you're using, for example, just play with, uh, uh, with an helicopter with a friend, and we just got, like, I was playing like 20 minutes straight, and we just got so many kills, it was so easy. When I take a tank or when I take the overcraft, just running over people, of course I did it myself. It's actually very satisfying, but not actually when it happens to you and you die so many times. So those who actually really love enjoying vehicles, they're going to have a blast in this uh, map because it's so open and there are so many players just lying around. You can easily shoot them down. So easy, especially with all the options for detecting enemies. And there are plenty of this. For example, the proximity mine, right? Uh, if you play... Uh, Pike, you have the EMGX scanner. Uh, there's also this, uh, I forgot the name, that has, um, uh, yeah, uh, Casper, that has the OVP raccoon drone that can scout to the end and actually detect enemies. Um, you have the Boris with his turret sentry, uh, uh, SG 36 sentry gun, it can also detect enemies. Um, if you're, of course, flying and you have some spot, you can easily detect enemies as well. That's and Basically, there are plenty of ways to actually uh, spot you. This means that the map is so open, somebody will get you, and usually uh, you're spotted. Basically, I never feel safe. That's why you always need to be on the move. And if you're kind of a person who just stay put, you're probably going to get uh, killed. So you can't really, even in such a large map, you can't really sit down a lot. And sometimes uh, in a worst case scenario, you're probably going to get a, a time to live 
uh, close to what you get in Call of Duty. And I'm talking about when you play with 128 players on a map. It's really that silly. You can die so... And people die a lot here. And, for example, in other battlefields, you can actually play safe. Somebody might spot you. Uh, there were so many vehicles, or it would be a bit of a hassle to get to, uh, to you. No, it was kind of balanced well. But in Battlefield 2042, it's totally the opposite. I mean, you can be run over by an overcraft. I personally run over so many players, like 60, 70 players in just one run. It was crazy. It's just crazy. And, in, and when I actually, I can even die 10 times in just one run, just by running, running over. It doesn't matter where I actually stand. And talking about the overcraft, of course, we know that the overcraft is very tanky. Move very fast, so it's very easy to take it down. Of course, this will be uh, taken care of. It's always be uh, we already know it's going to be nerfed. Uh, maybe by the time we actually see this video, it's already nerfed. But the thing is that the the balance of this game is just a catastrophe. Now let's talk about bugs, right? When people say bugs, 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 well, of course every game is bugs, but this is a very annoying. The app is so relatively so frequently where you're stuck in the game, where you can't revive, when you actually die, you can't actually do anything, you can't even redeploy. The, the many issues that are just annoying and happen quite frequently, that just kind of uh, breaks the game, basically. Uh, and it happens. Even more than actually you want it. It's actually kind of annoying because it happens so frequently. When I get out of the game, getting inside, I get to an infinite uh, game that never ends. I try getting out, getting again, same thing. Getting out, getting again, same thing. Now, these type of things will be, of course, reported, especially when so many players are playing the game. Uh, this will be probably uh, be addressed, and we only know that some of these things, especially what I actually mentioned now, will be addressed in our upcoming patch. Now, I have to tell you that, oh boy, I love the close quarter maps uh, when they introduced in Battlefield 3. Oh, it was such, such an amazing DLC. Uh, and also enjoy, by the way, playing Metro. I know many of you don't like it, you know, but I enjoyed it. It was fun. I ride the three lanes, we need to push, and if you push, you can actually put a beacon. Uh, it was really, really fun and kind of turning out the battlefield. However, there's no close quarter here. If you want, you need to go to Portal, and then there are some game modes where uh, you actually uh, can play, uh, you know, different game modes that are kind of, uh, you know, modified. And you can get small maps, and and it's fun. Although, as I mentioned, there's still kind of, a, as of the time of making this video, they disable XP and all the other stuff, so it's kind of annoying. But I really want the official, official maps uh, getting, uh, not in Portal, official close quarter uh, shrink areas on current maps being used uh, as close quarter maps. You can use it without actually going to Portal. But there isn't. I need to go to Portal for that. When you go to Portal, you actually see, by the way, a browse service section. But there... You know, sometimes I found a good uh, server, actually, to favorite. I come back, it's not, it's not there anymore. Something is wrong in the server browser. It doesn't feel as uh, static as other servers, hosted servers were in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. Something is wrong there. It just feels that I'm not even going to spend time, uh, you know, investing in one server that I actually join playing with because the next day is just gone. And I wish there were, like, feature server available, you know, but or something official. Anyway, it's a complete mess, uh, and this is something that can be nice, by the way, once if Im implemented well, because modified servers can be nice. You can actually focus on certain smaller maps if you want to play close quarters, uh, but just modifying some uh, aspect of the game and actually serving this as just a, you know, as a feature custom server for players to enjoy. I actually found one server that actually have uh, many uh, small maps, uh, close quarter maps, and it's actually fun. But I do want close quarter maps specifically designed for close quarter combat uh, for Battlefield 2042, official maps. Uh, not just, you know, part of the big map, but official maps that were designed for close quarters. So from the ground up, they designed to actually really enjoy this. Like, you know, like a Metro, for example, Operation Metro in Battlefield 3 and also the updated version in Battlefield 4. Now, to be honest, I usually don't curse when I'm very angry, but actually the UI caused me to, when I was alone, of course, with myself, to curse. I absolutely was annoyed by this it took me i think like out of my 100 hours it took me like i think 15 hours to get used to it seriously what should be the most intuitive thing absolutely a disaster now if you already know this you know we need to go back and using the circle button to go back to the main menu which also show you warfare hard zone and portal 
And if you want to custom your character, you need to go through all that warfare because this option is not available for you on the other modes. It, the hierarchy of the UI is absolutely horrendous. And aside from that, using the button, just, it just felt completely off. I always make mistakes. It just feel like there's so many ways to actually improve it and make it simple. But instead of making it simple, they make it just a terrible experience. I never had such a bad experience in navigating through menus and customizing things as I had with this one. I always make mistakes with the buttons and stuff because it's designed so bad. Now let's talk about performance. First of all, when I tried the beta on the PC, I already knew, by the way, that it's going to be lots of troubles. I already knew, I already saw the issues and I know it's going to, not going to be solved when the game is released. It's, people who say it's just the beta are just uh, in the completely denial. They don't understand. Of course it won't be solved. Like, I want a month before release. Come on. The thing is that the performance was terrible. So terrible that I knew there's no chance, no chance that this game will run well. Especially after reading all the other uh, comments that people posted on one of my videos when it comes to performance. That they're having so many issues. I knew from that point on that the only way that I can get... Uh, good performance is actually choosing a console. Why? Because a console has fixed hardware. It's very easy to actually, uh, you know, optimize games for it compared to one that is saturated across, you know, many different devices with different type of hardware and combination of hardware. So I actually got it on the PlayStation 5 and actually it runs very, very well on the PlayStation 5 with very, very little issues. Overall, I have a great experience and I'm actually really happy that I made the choice not buying the game on PC and buy it on the PlayStation 5. So, but I'm saying in general, there are plenty of optimization issues that people experience. I'm talking about people who are playing this game with a high-end uh, rig with 3080, you know, and still getting really crappy frame rates. That's how bad the optimization is. But again, I'm playing on the PlayStation 5, it runs amazingly well. So I'm actually happy that I made the decision not getting on the PC and getting it on the PlayStation 5. Still, it's a problem. Now, the other thing is the monetization priority. And we definitely can see that this game was designed more for making money than actually offer a really great gameplay experience. You can actually, it's very, very clear. The, the, uh, the option to have these uh, specialists, it probably release more, the battle pass and all this thing. Fortnite is to blame, by the way, guys. Businesses see Fortnite success, how it actually works. They see Battle Royale, all this is trending right now. And they try to kind of uh, mix and match the best of these and they create. That's why actually Battlefield 2042 looks like now. Kind of a Battle Royale mixed with the Fortnite type of uh, you know um, progression and monetization practices. And that's why you see this really a, a game that really doesn't know what it wants to be. It just try to copy it from other games, hopefully to make sure that it will earn enough money. Uh, you know, hopefully these tricks will actually work in Battlefield 22, so they can be very profitable for the company. It's a mishmash of so many things that actually they need to actually overrun so many of the things and remove some features from the previous battlefields that won't actually kind of uh, contradict what actually this game wants to achieve in terms of monetization. That's why the game looks like that. Looks like nothing like Battlefield and more like kind of a Fortnite type of uh, Battle Royale mix and with Battlefield stuff. That's how it looks like. And this is the result. That's why it's so terrible. Now... I'm saying this, I have my great times with the game, and I still do, in certain game modes, of course, uh, certain maps. But the thing is that, uh, as a sandbox uh, first-person shooter, it's still a great experience. You need to understand, there's anything like that, in bat like Battlefield, uh, right now in the market. I wish there was. It's so much fun. It's, for example, when I play yesterday with a friend, we jump into Ellie, we just wipe everything. Uh, visuals, by the way, are great in this game. Uh, I really like the combat. Of course, as I told you, balance is completely off. Uh, but again, this can be fixed. But overall, the feeling, the atmosphere, uh, the music, uh, all these visual effects, everything, just seeing the planes kind of crash in the sky, the explosions, it just feels amazing. So this part is actually not something that was taken out. It's actually, uh, you know, something that was, was always there and it still is here. All right, it still is here. This kind of a feeling that the... Uh, the vibe that you get when you get into a battlefield, it, so many things are going on. You actually feel like in a war, it's so intensive. 
Now, of course, there are many missing features. I'm not going to go over them here, but the thing is that you need to understand this game was designed to stay with us for quite a few years. And, you know, like other Fortnite games and all these other similar games, we have battle passes. And instead of releasing another game in two years, it's just going to expand over the core base. That's how we, I think it feels like. That's how it's going to be. Uh, this means that this will be a place where uh, people won't kind of uh, quit because they're frustrated. So they actually strip down the global leaderboard, the sorry, global leaderboard, the scoreboard, uh, uh, we say P chat, many things that can actually cause players to get very frustrated and uh, maybe just leave the game. They want players to stay in the game, enjoy the game, not get out of the game because they are I don't know, being cyber bullied or other you know, other people being toxic to them. They just want to strip this down so players will stay in the game. But for the hardcore battlefield uh, battlefield fans. This is actually a disaster. They actually want to enjoy their, you know, hard work in the battlefield. They want to see the scoreboard. They want to see how they perform. They want others to see how they perform. This makes them feel good, investing time in actually getting better in the game, doing good in the battlefield, and then actually they can actually show it off. They can. What they get is just the same thing that over time many people will get in terms of those skins and other stuff that you unlock. Everybody will unlock it. You actually no thing to actually make you stand out and from the rest, what they actually are doing very good. That's it. I mean, there's also, of course, the um, the play card, uh, which you can use. There's actually some things you can actually show up. But again, this is not enough for players. They really want to uh, you know, see performance metrics show off. Show off the performance metrics, and it's kind of stripped down to them. So it feels like, in a way, that this game was kind of designed to you know, uh, please those who actually didn't get a very good experience in other battlefield because of the chat, uh, you know, other people, the voice chat, uh, because um, they felt like, you know, the community was a bit toxic to them if they weren't performing well. The squad actually were also something that you can change. And I can tell you from experience, I, I with some squads, you just can't play with them. I'm trying to focus on getting a point. There are like three snipers just staying and not doing anything, like just sniping from far. And the thing is that I cannot spawn on them because they're in a position that I don't want to spawn and I need to walk again from the beginning. And I just don't get the, the, the option to choose the squad that I know that can uh, perform well on the objective that I'm actually focusing at. And what's the point? It actually was really fun, by the way, doing this in other battlefields. You don't have to stay with somebody who's just strolling, for example. You can't change it. You're stuck. And uh, this is something that butter hardcore Butterfield fans will be very annoyed by. But we need to acknowledge that there are benefits from this for people who are, really don't like other people just leaving the squad. They need to search and other people don't play with them. And some of them are just closed. You can actually join them at all. There are issues with this as well. So I can say, understand both the positive and negative, but there are negatives. And some players will get very annoyed by this, not having the option to do so. The game actually uh, force them to actually stay in a specific squad. Now, again, I can talk like an all day about these issues, and there are plenty of issues, all right? There are plenty of them, uh, but the same, at the same breath, I can tell you that I do enjoy my time in a specific game mode and specific maps that I enjoy playing. When I play those, I have lots of fun. When I play with friends, even more. It's really fun. Uh, now, I hope, right, at the same point, because I already purchased it. If you ever purchase it, think twice. Listen to the, to, to the criticism out there and make it the choice for yourself. Maybe you should wait because the game really has big problems. I'm not saying that I usually don't kind of heavy criticize, negatively criticize. I think, honestly, it's really, really, really bad. Uh, I can mention things, but saying like, consider buying it, it's probably there's something really bad that actually made me say this. And here, there are really bad things that actually made me uh, say that. Just think twice before you're actually getting the game. All right? You can wait. You can wait a bit until they play fixes. I mean, what's the rush? It's not an eSport game, right? So what's the rush? Right? Some people just want to get in, you know, they are competitive no matter what they do. They just want to go in, get everything first. Some do, some like that. Not they're getting anything from it, just, you know, bragging rights and stuff. It didn't make them feel good. Some, some actually just want to get to the action straight away. Some actually just do this because they want to share the gameplay streaming for others. Everybody its own reasons. But the thing is, the game has issues, all right? And you need to think for yourself whether all these things actually uh, will be a, a problem for you once you start playing the game and you'll be disappointed and you're going to regret actually buying it. So this is it. Waiting for your comments. Are you very happy? Some probably are very happy with the game and not sure if one others are complaining about. But come on, there are reasons to complain and there are many, many issues. I just want to hear your opinion about the game. 
what you think about the game, what actually bothers you the most, right? What issues you think are actually, you know, just ruining the experience. I really I actually hearing some people already saying they just stop playing. They invested like, I don't know, 60, 70 hours and they just can't. They get bored. It's totally you know, unbalanced. They just don't enjoy playing anymore. They actually get more so frustrated, so frustrated, they can just uninstall the game of frustration. Yeah, there are plenty of people doing it. Plenty. Other people are totally in denial or just cry. You know, some of the reasons they go cry on Reddit because this is a place to kind of release the negative outside and, you know, and then they go back and play again. But the thing is that we will actually not solve the problem, even though that's temporarily. It's kind of like taking a pill, right? You feel the arm, you feel the headache, but the problem still resists. And then you go back, you get it again. It doesn't solve the issues. The thing is that uh, for me, I just know what to focus on, that feeling I enjoy, the one that I don't enjoy, I don't focus on. Hopefully it will get better. If it doesn't get better, plenty of other games to play. And if I feel like stopping, I can stop. All right. If I actually think that I'm uh, spending too much money, in general, by the way, I think that I play this. I will play this for a long time, so I think it's well invested. So I don't. Uh, I have no big issues with this. I have big issues with the game, but it's too late for now. What can I do, right? I can't change it right now. Maybe in the next Battlefield game, we'll think twice. Uh, this is it. Waiting for your comments below. Consider subscribing to my channel. Give this one a little like, and see you soon for the next video. If you agree, disagree, again, in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.